Speaking of uh, organizations teaming up to tell you to fuck off, losers. Hmm. Honestly, though, I mean, as long as they're still on PCs, does it matter? Uh, oh, so well, they said that some some titles will now become exclusives. So maybe so Fallout what? 5, or whatever they wind up calling it, only comes out on Xbox. Who's to say? But, but it will still come out on PC, ultimately, because... Yeah, the only difference is it might not come out on, uh, like, PlayStation or something. Oh, no. Boo-hoo. Boo-hoo. Yeah, I guess I mean, because Windows, fair, Microsoft will still release has been a shitty company for a while, so... Yep. I mean, they're not they're not on, like, Blizzard tier, you know. Um, well, that was after the Activision buyout, but, yeah, this is probably going to be similar. I mean, Bethesda was already getting pretty fucking bad for a while there anyway, especially with how they treated people who bothered to play Fallout 76. That game got microtransaction to hell. But realistically, moving forward... I don't have much faith that there's not going to be more bullshit like that because Microsoft loves microtransactions. Yeah. S speak, speaking of uh, shitty gaming companies and Blizzard, uh, they recently hired uh, an ex-fucking uh, uh, Bush uh, staffer to, uh, to a, a high corporate position, like a VP of something rather like and he was the one that was in charge of basically uh uh he was in charge of counterterrorism during mm. the bush administration oh really yeah well activision and blizzard employed <laughs> you know her. it's uh, they make call of duty so it's they just need some more people who really were there <laughs> maybe they'll actually get some of these backgrounds and places correct you know like the uh kumal nanjiani has a bit about how he was all excited that karachi Pak pakistan had a level in one of those games and he was all excited and then he looks at the signs and they're all in fucking arabic and uh yeah for those who don't know pakistan does not speak arabic they speak urdu which is basically that tells you about how much nothing like uh, it one call of duty's audience cares about that mm -hmm. and also uh call of duty's makers care about that exactly so you know what they care they about money ultimately they just know that they can get little 12 year old boys to you know, have their parents shell out money to have them have brown people killing Simulator 2021 or whatever the fuck it's called now. And yeah, I mean, at this for point, Call of Duty might as well be a propaganda machine to join the armed it, forces. Yeah, it's basically a continuation of that one game that came out, like, over a decade ago now called America's Army that was literally well, designed to be a training no, sim. The thing is, Call of Duty existed before America's Army, though. Right, but it was more of a historical shooter. It wasn't all this modern and postmodern shit until the last decade. Well, decade and a half now, fuck. I think Modern Warfare came out, like, in 2007. Hmm. Yeah, that was when it really all started. That's when they stopped making World War II games. Yeah, and then they dipped back on another title, I believe, at some point. But then, basically, yeah, 2007, yep, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. 2007 was the downfall of the franchise. Arguably, though, a lot of people think it's the best one ever. <sighs> but yeah, no, it's basically a jingoistic juggernaut of bullshit used to desensitize kids and get them all gung-ho to shoot down uh, brown people in the someone, names of resources. Someone always says best one ever about some fucking 
piece of shit. I absolutely disagree with that. I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is the best one ever. Because, and also the last yeah, one. Yeah, you're right. You're because right. I, one, I, it, yeah. the, because Call of Duty, the first one, was just dark all the time. And the fucking... <laughs> couldn't really even see anything most of the time, really. The graphics were shit. Four actually had, like, environments that were colored. Also, um, this the storyline... And I know, a storyline in the Call of Duty game... Uh surprise the storyline yeah. was better because it involves a rogue u.s general using a uh, russian terrorist uh to incite a war against uh russia itself to start a war by by also like putting in a uh, a fucking black op like a, a former army ranger that you play in the game and then you is go, and it's the one, it's, it has the that, part where that, you, like, shoot up the airport. And is that the to, guy named Soap? Is that, no, is no, that, that's, is he's that the soap? British guy. But, uh, no, oh, this, okay. this, this general ends up using this to basically attain, like, full military power. Like, they give him full control. Russia bombs the United States, like, <laughs> or sends people, sends, sends troops in. And it, it was, it was started because they sent in a an ar a former army ranger turned CIA operative into this Russian terrorist group and they end up the terrorist group ends up turning it on the CIA operative and you go in to shoot up this airport and because you're with them you shoot up civilians at a Russian airport and you actually do this in the game you can actually skip the level and then then at the end, they knew you were uh, you were an operative the entire time. Shoot you, leave your dead body at the airport. So it looks like America sent in an operative to help kill civilians at the airport, and it starts this quasi war, and it's all planned by this corrupt army general. Sounds uh, pretty close to reality. Yeah, exactly. That's like that's why it. That's why I say like. The Modern Warfare 2 is by far the best one. If we're going to pick, like, out of Modern Warfares, which, I mean, to be fair, isn't all, isn't that big of a selection. They're, most of them are shit, but... Yeah. It was good enough to spawn annual renewals to the service in hopes that they were going to get another fix like it. Because, yeah, I remember that first nine minutes or so sequence at the beginning of that game was super fucking controversial. Because it wasn't 100% pro-military in every conceivable way? Well, no, because you literally go into an airport and help murder a bunch of civilians. Sweet. You, yeah, you do things that we've done in the past, you know. <laughs> yeah. You experience. Yes. real, man. Yes. Murder civilians? No. Why does this offend people? This should this should get fucking especially right wingers hot and bothered. You know you can't have all these wars without because they're murdering fight. Americans, not not. Well, no, the, you are murdering Russian civilians. Oh, okay, sorry. You're murdering Russians, hey, which are white people. Republicans are all for murdering American civilians as long as they're wearing black, or are black, especially. If they are black or they're wearing black and might be one of those scary Antifa BLM marchers, well then, death penalty. To be fair, though, I think a lot of the people calling for uh, censorship on the airport level were actually, uh, like, shit libs and whatnot that were scared that it would inspire, Moms, like, school shooters. The, the PMRC types. Yeah, they were scared it would inspire, like, school shooters and shit like that. Mm -hmm. The conservatives are probably, well, you know, the newer conservatives um, were probably, yeah, I think a lot of them were just like, whatever, you know, freedom, derp -a -der, you should be able to do whatever you want in a video game. It's funny how closely aligned uh, 
a lot of these shit libs and and old school conservatives are, especially now looking looking as like the Democratic Party is is turning further and further to the right. Well, I also oh, hate that we have Overton window. We have common ground with ANCAPs here too, who are all for like uh, pro military murder propaganda. You know, because uh, I love violent video games, but I also hate pro U.S. military propaganda. So mm -hmm. I'm sort of uh, in this awkward spot where I'd be okay with uh, bowdlerizing or getting rid of these fucking games just to get rid of the brainwashing, you know, well, brainwashing well, isn't real, but you know what I mean, the fucking propagandizing element to try and get 17-year-olds to uh, sign up to uh, fucking, yeah. uh, throw, you know, possibly go die overseas before they can even legally smoke a fucking cigarette now. Because of the same shit libs that want to ban violent video games, raising the smoking age to 21. They can't buy alcohol, they can't buy cigarettes. Uh, in these people's ideal world, they couldn't buy a fucking video game that represents what they're getting hired to go do for the next fucking four years in a fucking irrevocable contract. Just the, the rank hypocrisy on all sides disgusts me, frankly. There are no good guys here. Except for us. We're objectively correct, so we win. Except that, you know. kind of correct. <laughs> yes. We're a bunch of well, anus rans, all right. The, 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 a lot of the, in a lot of these fucking Call of Duty games, they're not, like, they're not, it, the, we're not going to miss on anything by them being gone. One, these days they're starting to become irrelevant because finally people are finding other things like Fortnite, or even before that there is a, Unknown player unknown battlegrounds of PUBG, like they're realizing, like because they're because they've become so formulaic that like it's just the same multiplayer game over and over again. I think they even they've even released one some of them without without even like a story mode. So it's it's like that fucking criticism, like or people say like well under under communism there's no variety. Or there's no or, or artistic freedom or some shit. And in yeah. reality, it's just you just point out like, yeah, well, this is what we have under capitalism. Yeah, and also I don't need fifty different types of Prego pasta sauce. Yeah. To be happy. Yeah, these are bad examples, but you you guys know what I'm looking for, right? Those like. Uh... Like here, here we go. Oh, you talking about those gentrified fucking? Oh, you oh you mean those housing edition houses? Yes, and and uh, you know, like yeah, these look kind of cool, but they're also all identical. Yeah, I used to I used to live in a housing edition that looked very similar to one of those images that you pulled up. I hate those giant glass windows. see here it's gonna make it cold as fuck it was in pittsburgh like winter's gonna suck ass with that yeah God, it's it's yeah, hard I mean, for me to think about like what some the... levitt town bullshit like just You've seen one subdivision, you've seen them all. It's hard to find pictures of exactly what I'm thinking of, but I think you guys know exactly what I'm imagining. Those cheap-ass one-story duplexes that all look the same and come in rows and rows and rows, sort of like this, where the yeah, rent like is... like I said, some Levittown shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's a... Real decent example. Oh yeah, yeah, I know it. I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, those, are, those kinds these of are, places. Those are all over the place in uh, in fucking Vincennes, Indiana. Here we go. Oh. This shit. Yes. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, this isn't depressing looking at all. I mean, I guess the Ugh. plants are okay, but come on. That's this the, shit looks yeah. pretty stereotypically communist to me and yet it's built under capitalism it's almost like it's you know efficiency architecture yeah 
for premium pricing. Yeah. For people mm. that are paying like over eight hundred dollars a month to live in housing like that in Indianapolis right now. Mm-hmm. Your audio cut out for like five seconds there for some reason. I have no idea why. Uh, I I said you have people paying over eight hundred dollars a month, eight hundred dollars a month or more for for a single bedroom in one of those things to yep. live in Indianapolis right now. Yep, you sure do. Places that look like this, 